Hey, I'm Rob Witcher, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to investigations in Domain 7 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies and help you pass the CISSP exam. This is the first of six videos for Domain 7. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. All right, let's talk about how we apply the principles and methods of forensic science to investigations. This is all about what an organization needs to do if, for example, they have detected a breach or had a whistleblower report something or Visa has called asking why our systems are leaking millions of customer credit card numbers. One of the most important first steps is securing the scene, establishing a perimeter to prevent unauthorized persons from entering the scene in order to avoid the loss or contamination of evidence. Securing the scene is paramount, as once evidence is contaminated, it cannot be decontaminated. Securing a digital crime scene is particularly challenging, as we want to preserve as much evidence as possible, but balance that against things like stopping an ongoing breach. Should a computer system be unplugged from the network or even shut down? Doing so too quickly could compromise the investigation, but doing so too slowly would allow additional data to be leaked. Once we begin collecting evidence, there are a few principles, techniques, and sources we should be aware of. Locard's principle often comes up on the exam. Put simply, it states that when a crime is committed, the perpetrator will leave something behind and take something with them. Locard's principle helps investigators think through where they may be able to find evidence. Investigators also need to find mum motive, opportunity, and means. This is an investigative technique used to determine if a suspect has the motive, for example, financial gain, the opportunity, were they at the crime scene, and means, the tools and technical expertise necessary. There are a few sources of evidence for an investigator. Oral or written statements are when witnesses tell an investigator what they witnessed or write it down. Documents are any notes, files, and the like that an investigator can find at the scene or elsewhere. Digital forensics is the scientific examination and analysis of data from storage media in such a way that the information can be used as evidence in a court of law. One of the most challenging and important types of digital evidence is known as live evidence. This is any data stored in volatile memory within a system places like RAM and the CPU cache and registers. Recovering live evidence requires specialized tools, and any live evidence is lost when a system is powered down. Where most digital evidence is going to be found is secondary storage, primarily hard drives, but also USB drives, memory sticks, CDs and DVDs, tapes, zip disks, whatever. An important point to remember is that when an investigator obtains a hard drive, they do not conduct any of their investigations on the original drive. Rather, they make two bit-for-bit -bit copies, which they verify via hashing. And any investigations are conducted only on one of the copies. This helps to ensure that any evidence collected will be admissible. Cloud-based systems make investigations both easier and more difficult. In infrastructure as a service, for example, it is possible to make an exact copy of a virtual machine or VM instance, including any of the live evidence on the system. This is often referred to as snapshotting, and it makes collecting evidence much easier. More challenging is requesting and conducting investigations of physical hard drives. In the public cloud, the cloud provider is very unlikely to provide physical hard drives for investigations, as other client data will be stored on those drives. But investigators can request copies of virtual disks or volumes. E-discovery or electronic discovery is the process of identifying, collecting, and producing electronically stored information for legal proceedings. This is an important one to remember, the chain of custody. You should associate the chain of custody with one word, control. The chain of custody is the process of documenting the complete journey of evidence during the life of the case, demonstrating that you had control of the evidence from the moment it was collected to potentially years later when it is presented in a court of law. And thus, the evidence has integrity. 
of the different types of evidence we just spoke of. We can categorize them in a few different ways. We'll cover just two. Real evidence is tangible and physical objects like hard drives, but not the data on them. Direct evidence is testimony from first-hand witnesses. The best evidence rule is a legal principle that applies to any of the evidence we have discussed, and it simply means the courts view original, unaltered evidence as superior evidence or the best evidence. That leads us to the five rules of evidence, which are required for evidence to be considered useful in an investigation. The first rule of evidence is authentic. Authentic means you can tie the evidence back to the scene. You can prove the evidence relates to the incident in some relevant way. Accurate equates to integrity. You can prove the evidence has integrity and it hasn't been changed in some way. Complete means you collect all the evidence, even exculpatory evidence, which might help clear a suspect. The evidence must be convincing and reliable and explainable to a jury. Your evidence collection and analysis procedures must not cast doubt on the evidence authenticity and veracity, its degree of truth. And finally, you want your evidence to be admissible. This is the most basic rule. The evidence must be able to be used in a court of law or elsewhere. It must be admissible. Now, what are some of the techniques that we can use to analyze the evidence we have collected? Media analysis, often referred to as computer forensics, is examining physical media for evidence, such as hard drives. Media analysis includes trying to recover data from a hard drive that someone has drilled a hole in, put in the microwave, or used with a hammer. Software analysis, also referred to as software forensics, is examining software, such as malware, to determine what the software was designed to do. For example, encrypt files for ransomware, or exfiltrate credit card numbers. Another important part of software analysis is attribution, carefully analyzing the code to identify who authored the software. Network analysis is examining network traffic and log files to identify how an attacker initially gained access to the network, how they traversed the network, what they gained access to, and what they compromised. There are a few different types of investigations that you need to know about. Criminal investigations deal with crimes and the legal punishment of criminal offenses. Criminal investigations are driven primarily by law enforcement with the support from the organization. Civil investigations deal with disputes between individuals, organizations, or between the two in which compensation is awarded to the victim. Civil investigations can be driven by law enforcement or the organization. Regulatory investigations deal with violations of regulated activities, such as breaches of personally identifiable information, and will be driven by the regulator. Administrative investigations deal with an organization investigating its own internal incident. Based on findings, an internal investigation may become a criminal, civil, or regulatory investigation. And the final part of any investigation is the extremely thorough documentation of evidence collected and preparing to present that evidence to the relevant stakeholders, a judge, a jury, the opposition, regulators, investors, etc. And documenting that evidence in a way that these various stakeholders will understand it. And that is an overview of investigations within Domain 7, covering the most critical concepts to know for the exam. If you found this video helpful, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified when we release additional videos in this mind map series, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. I will provide links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and all the best in your studies.